Welcome to this interview with Synact Pharma regarding the news on the EXPAND study. To tell us about this, I have in the studio CEO Turbjörn Bjerke, MD, uh, Thomas Jensen, CSO and MD, and CBO Jim Knight. Please welcome. Thank you very much, Matthias. So, can you provide us with a background on the EXPAND study data you released today? Yes. Uh, so, so, this morning we released the top-line data of the so-called EXPAND study. This is a study elucidating the efficacy of uh, uh, resumelagon or AP1189 uh, versus placebo. Uh, which is a uh, methotrexate treatment, uh, that is a normal treatment to start RA uh, uh, treatment on, uh, in addition to the placebo. Uh, so these top line data is focused on what we call the ACR20. The ACR20 is a way of, of looking into this, the, the disease severity of these patients. These patients are, like in the first study, the BEGIN study, is treatment naive, that's saying that they have not received any treatment yet in RA, um, and they are quite severe patients. Um, and unfortunately, and very unexpectedly, uh, we did not see any difference uh, between the placebo and the active, which was the, uh, the aim of the study was to show a 20% uh, difference after 12 weeks of, of treatment. So this is very unexpected. Uh, so um, Thomas will talk a little bit more about uh, the reason we believe for this. Uh, remember, we have not had the data for a long time, so we need to dig more into this. Uh, but we'll, we'll give you a, a, a picture. Uh, what I can say is that we believe that there uh, was an unexpected very high placebo effect. And unfortunately, this is uh, often... Uh, uh, very uh, uh, has a big impact on showing differences. When you are at 100%, you cannot come further uh, in the efficacy. What we saw was also an, an unexpected high effect on the so-called subjective measures, and Thomas will get much more into that. So uh, we have a negative study, um, but we also have positive elements of this study, and importantly, in terms of the objective measures uh, we, uh, we, we measured in the, the study, we saw similar activity as the BEGIN. And remember that the BEGIN study was quite positive, where we showed a, a good uh, significant difference between uh, placebo and uh, 100 milligram per day, as we are testing this time as well. So we have seen activity in this study as well. However, due to the, the, the high degree of placebo effect, we do not get the, the delta, the difference uh, in, we believe. Uh, there are also many other elements that we're digging into at the moment and will come out when we have been through all the data um, in, in due course time. Uh, what we also are very happy about, actually, and we must not forget that, is the safety profile. We showed a very good safety profile after three months of treatment. And, and this is also very important in the treatment cascade in, in RA. Um, so um, so we'll, we'll get back with, with more data, uh, but, um, uh, but uh, we, our belief in 1189 or the uh, is is not gone, absolutely not. Okay, thank you. So we'll move uh, on to Thomas then. And can you tell us anything about why you were so surprised by these uh, subjective responses? Yes, um, we set this expand study up. We set that up at sites in Eastern Europe that also participated in our begin study. The begin study was the first study we we conducted in rheumatoid arthritis, here where half of the patients were recruited here in the Nordic countries and the other half in, uh, in the Eastern European countries. And what we saw there was a very uniform response with regard to objective and subjective readouts for both territories, indicating very clearly and also showing the statistical significance that the compound already within four weeks had a statistically significant higher treatment effect than compared to placebo. And the patient's population were very comparable uh, to what we have seen in, in uh, what we uh, have, have taken into this study. In this study, the EXPAND study, uh, we uh, focused on Eastern European sites. And we did that because we would like to test the compound in truly 
treatment in a patient who were uh, not uh, co-treated with glucocorticoids and where the likelihood that we during the uh, and where the with general uh, practice is not to use a lot of, 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 of glucocorticoid injections which is, has been standard here in the Nordic countries and also uh, to a large degree also uh, um, low dose glucocorticoid. So we had a, a clear population there. We had tested that in the beginning study where we had a very, very, very nice response with low placebo effects and with uh, complete, uh, uh, where, the, where the signals on the, on the objective and the uh, subjective uh, readouts went in the same direction. In this study, unfortunately, it seems to be somewhat different and that we simply have to understand. Um, we see the we, we see with and, and, and the best way to, to look at this can we see the same changes in, in sw uh, swollen and tender joints after four weeks uh, as we could in the begin study and the in the active group and the answer is yes but then something happens about speci especially the, the scoring in the patient and and, af and as this scoring is very much uh, as as the scoring system is very much dependent on these subjective readouts we, we do get uh, what we could consider to be a biased in direction of the, of the placebo. And, and that's why we get this, and could explain why we get uh, the data as we, we got. And that is the main focus for us to understand at this time point. Thank you. Uh, your other ongoing phase two study, uh, Resolve, is expected to be released in uh, October. What are your, your expectations for that trial, given the result of the EXPAND study? Yeah. Well, you know, while the uh, severe treatment naive population that was studied in both the begin and expand trials does have a high level of unmet need, we felt that the, uh, the methotrexate or DMARD incomplete responder, or known as DMARD IR, a patient population that's being studied in Resolve, uh, really represents the real high value commercial opportunity for Ismelagon in RA. Uh, this does represent a significant uh, change in the patient population being studied uh, as these DMART IR patients um, are still experiencing moderate to severely active disease uh, despite a full and adequate course of methotrexate therapy. Uh, it's a very important population, large population, uh, high, submit, uh, high unmet needs uh, and is not being adequately well served um, by the current treatment modalities that exist. Uh, it's also a multi-billion dollar product opportunity given its size and, and its uh, importance in the RA market. Um, importantly also Resolve is the first trial that we're conducting under our new US IND or Investigational New Drug application approved by the FDA. And so we're really excited under that IND to work with some very um, experienced uh, RA clinical trial sites here in the, U uh, in the US uh, that uh, um, you know, uh, have recruited very well thus far uh, in the Resolve study. So we remain very uh, excited about the opportunity for uh, Rosmelagon in DMART IR, and uh, we are looking forward to the uh, Resolve Phase 2A data uh, coming out this October. Okay. So uh, what do, do the expand result mean uh, for Synact moving forward? Yes, obviously the results today is, is not positive. However, as we have heard and what we have, have said here is that we, we definitely also see, uh, see activity that is quite similar to, to the begin. So there is definitely uh, hope for the compound. And we are, we had a discussion at the board yesterday, um, and we are, we are very committed, uh, both management as well as the, uh, the board to continue this development. We are eager to, uh, to, to see the, uh, the result data. And uh, as Jim alluded to, these are a different patient population. Uh, we would expect uh, a lower uh, placebo effect uh, in, in that population. Uh, so, so, so we are very committed to, to that. Uh, RA is our first uh, indication. We believe in the, uh, uh, in the inflammation resolution. We believe in the, uh, the uh, mode of action of this, um, uh, this uh, compound, this melagon. Uh, we believe that this compound, this treatment could have a big impact uh, in, uh, in inflammatory diseases. So absolutely a hiccup, but uh, we believe that uh, we, uh, we need to, um, to continue the development because this is so exciting. Um, and in the meantime, as we said, we will dig much, much more into the reason for this discrepancy and the high placebo rate. Unfortunately, as I alluded to, this is uh, in drug development, it's a, a normal failure 
uh, situation where you have a, a big placebo effect of different reasons. We need to dig into that. We need to really elucidate what, what, what was going on here. Uh, so unfortunately, there is uh, no difference uh, between the, the arms and we need to understand why. And we have started that work, uh, we have found dis discrepancies and we, we need to dig more into that. In terms of, uh, many will, will ask the question, what about the financial situation? We have, uh, we have funds until the beginning of next year. Uh, but we have a clear strategy uh, for that as well. Uh, we, uh, we wanted to, to wait for, for the data uh, uh, to come of, of different reasons, um, but uh, this will be uh, 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 one big focus for us, of, obviously, in order to hopefully be able to then, following uh, results data, be able to continue the, uh, the development within this indication. Thank you so much and thank you for joining me in the studio. Good luck going forward. Thank you, Matthias. Thank you.